नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी घनश्याम महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ओम माइडी और बलविड डियर घनश्याम महाराज the path maker to our liberation our very very compassionate puja guru ji puja santo and all of you bhaktos jai swami narayan last week we talked about bhagwan swami narayan's unique vision of celebrating festivals if we look at from an out outer viewpoint it seems like a lot of fun throwing colors in the air powders um eating lavish food in the form of sakotso or playing ras meaning we can say in a very formal manner dancing with santos and maharaj but these different various techniques that bhagwan swami narayan used to bond santos to bond hari bhaktos with one another was very unique and due to that the swaminarayan satsang flourished day by day if bhagwan swaminarayan did not or had not celebrated such kinds of festivals then satsang would have grown due to bhagwan swaminarayan's immense grace but it would have been a little bland it would have been a little bit of simplicity to it due to that bhagwan swami narayan had to understand and and initiate such kinds of festivals according to the modern age so that all the bhaktos and those santos can engage and bond with one another in satsang last week we took a look at the festival of maharas in panchara or bhagwan swami narayan showed his unique unique different various characteristics and qualities and virtues and from that we understood that maharas was just not only performing ras or dancing with maharaj and santos but it actually was a form of bhakti or devotion towards maharaj today we're going to actually look at another festival in the time of bhagwan swami narayan who initiated this festival just for the sole cause of sudha khachar's prem everyone loves this festival may it be if it was celebrated 220 years ago or may it be celebrated even today because the very one thing that everyone loves is eating food is such so dear to everyone that most of us want the most tastiest foods most of us want the best of beverages and most of us want everything very warm or a hot meal we can say all these kinds of luxuries we desire or we also indulge in in our day to day life now bhagwan swami narayan knew this that each and every human craves for food especially tasty food so instead of neglecting food instead of you know downing food by saying that hari bhaktos or devotees should only eat very very simple foods bhagwan swami narayan actually himself organized a food festival in that time called the sakotso where he himself cooked for 
more than two and a half months in the remote village of Loya, which belonged to Surakachar. And there he cooked and he served himself a stew made from brinjals, or we can say eggplant, or right now in the Gujarati term, ringan. And from that, Bhagwan Swaminarayan turned this ordinary food into a festival and into bhakti or devotion. How so? Before in that time, there was many, many who did not receive food. There was many, many who did not know Bhagwan Swaminarayan. But Maharaj invited many, many thousands of people and there he himself made the prasad, the food, and himself served those bhaktos. Due to those, not bhaktos, but people, we can say, due to this very action, countless souls were liberated due to Bhagwan Swaminarayan's action. And till that point, until now, it continues in our parampara. Our organization, Loya Dham, flourishes day by day by holding this festival at least twice a year by the Agna of our Puja Guruji. Hari Bhaktos from all around New Jersey and even close by states come to engage in this festival. And from that, they also enjoy prasad. But moreover, Kathavarta, discourses are also given to them and they learn about Bhagwan Swaminarayan, his glory, his greatness. This was the technique Bhagwan Swaminarayan used. Bhagwan Swaminarayan used such techniques where he did not use any kind of force, he did not use any kind of spells, he did not use any kind of any kind of rigid action to change or transform the soul. Bhagwan Swaminarayan used simple yet effective and efficient, you can say, methods, techniques to transform the soul. Well, what do I mean? How can a soul be transformed? Well, each and every soul has different visions, different understandings. Souls meaning one's mind, one's antakaran. Now, due to that different understanding, one cannot reach God and also one performs various habits where Bhagwan Swaminarayan does not like and one cannot stay in Akshardham. So Bhagwan Swaminarayan transformed various souls by celebrating such kind of festivals as the Sakotso. So let's get into the story of the Sakotso and understand how it came about. Swaminarayan Hare. Once Maharaj's santos were in Loya with Maharaj Nityan Swami, Nishkuran Swami, and other santo, and they were preparing food for all the santos and Maharaj himself, Maharaj observed their efforts and enthusiasm and said, Since all of you are making food items, I would also like to make something for all of you and serve it as well. Sudakachar said, Maharaj, which food item would you prepare? Maharaj replied, Order brinjals from Gadada and I will cook them in ghee. I'll add curd, gram flour, coriander, turmeric, and other condiments to make it tasty and extraordinary. Within a short period of time, the provisions had arrived in Loya. The next day, a cartload of brinjals were bought, were bought by Laruba and Juba from Gadada. Maharaj had them washed and stuffed with spices. Then Maharaj mixed gram flour with curd and added it to the pots containing brinjals. In each pot he added plenty of ghee and cooked them. And then he served his santos. And that's how the Sakotsa was started for the very first time. But this was a small uh, amount he cooked. But the most famous and revered Sakotsa that Maharaj performed was just two or three days later on, devotees from another village came 
for the darshan of Maharaj. They wanted to sponsor a meal for Maharaj, Santo and Bhakto. They had brought with them 18 months, meaning 360 kilos of fresh ghee, which is clarified butter, which they offered to Maharaj. Maharaj became pleased and replied, the devotees here will make the other food items, like khichdi, rotla, and all that, but you order brinjals. I will cook them for you myself. The devotees inquired regarding how much brinjals will you need. Maharaj stated 60 muns, meaning 1200 kilos, will be needed. Maharaj made for the very first time, there was multiple pots, cooking pots set up, stoves actually made, meaning dug from the ground and then wood was put into it. And Maharaj made 1200 brinjals in 360 kilograms of ghee for, you can say, th hundreds and thousands of bhaktos there in the village of Loya. Now, <clears throat> this was just a story of how Maharaj cooked. But how did he perform kalyan? How did he change the lives? Not only mere, merely by serving, but he also proved many kinds of principles. And there was this one story where Maharaj was actually performing the sakotso, meaning making the stew. And what had happened was that Sriji Maharaj soon arrived and he started to prepare the stir fry mix. And the heat was unbearable, so he began to sweat. He was wearing a short dhoti, which was used to wipe the spices off of his hands. Once the vegetables were put in, he mixed them and he started to cook. Just then, a group of 150 devotees came. Amongst them, there was a name, there was a bhagat by, or there was a, a person by the name of Kandas of Bua and Kashidas of Boshasan. As soon as Kasidas had Maharaj's darshan, he began doing Dunwats. Kasidas, Kandas was curious. Who are you doing Dunwats to? The man here is God, Kandas questioned. He is covered in sweat. His dhoti is stained in spices. He is a mere cook. Now see, Kasidas, when he came and entered the village, he started to perform Dunwats. Because he did not look at Maharaj's exterior form. Meaning, Maharaj was sweating like a cook. Maharaj's clothes were all spiced up and dirty. And Maharaj was stirring the big pot. So if any ordinary person comes, what is he going to think? Oh, he's just a cook. That's all he is, nothing else. But Kasidas had San Samagam. Kasidas also had Kathavarta, due to that, he knew that whatever Lila Charitra Maharaj performed, it was only for this, for the good of the bhaktos and it was Kalyankari. Meaning, even if he was sweating and he was, his clothes were dirty and he was cooking, this was all due to the liberation of those bhaktos. So he performed Dhanvats. But the other fellow that he brought with him, Kandas, he said, you're calling him God? He's sweating. His clothes are dirty. How could you even see God in him? He's a mere cook. Can you believe that? Why would he be doing Dunwats? Kandas, saying this, walked off hastily. Sri Maharaj saw what had happened. Now this is where the Sakotso gets interesting. Because Maharaj did not just cook, but he performed such kinds of leelas clear up misconceptions to help and guide those who were misled that Bhagwan Swaminarayan was God himself and he did it by performing such kind of leelas. So Kandas took off after saying this. Sri Maharaj saw what had happened. He called out to Muktanan Swami. What would you call a person who goes all the way to the bank of the Ganga River, but comes back thirsty. This is what 
he called or he asked, this is what Sri Maharaj asked Muktanand Swami. What do you call a person who goes all the way to the Ganga River and comes back thirsty? We can just say an idiot, right? What Maharaj was saying, his, his message was, you come all the way here, you have my darshan, I am God, yet you cannot satisfy your misunderstanding or mind's understanding. You do not you did not have you did not enjoy the bliss of my murti and you run off. What a fool. Muktan Swami answered, Such a person is a fool. Kandas heard Muktanand Swami's words. He looked back and saw Sriji Maharaj. A peaceful glow shone forth from his divine form. Seeing this, Kandas went into Samadhi. So Maharaj had to turn Kandas' understanding around. So when Kandas looked after, Swami, after Maharaj asked Muktanand Swami, and Muktanand Swami answered, you fool, then light was radiating from Bhagwan's whole form. And when Kanda saw this, he immediately went into Samadhi. Kandas heard Muktan and Swami's words. He looked back and saw Sri Maharaj and he went into Samadhi. When he awoke, Muktan and Swami and Kasidas were seated nearby. Kandas realized the Murti he had seen in Akshadam was Sri Maharaj himself. His joy knew no bounds. Kandas, Muktan and Swami said, when God comes to earth, he looks like a human. He hides his divinity. But his true devotees recognize him, so never see God as an ordinary human. Sri Maharaj called Kandas near and gave him prasad of the Sakotsa. Sri Maharaj's brinjals and his divine murti found a place in Kandas' heart. He now had complete faith in Sri Maharaj's divinity. Now, from this lesson, what Maharaj did was he cooked food. He cooked a stew and he served prasad. But doing this, he also showed his supremacy. He also displayed his greatness. And he also helped people or helped lost people develop firm conviction in his form that he is the supreme lord of lords. The main message from this charitra is that Muktan Swami said, when God comes on this earth, he looks like a human. He hides his divinity, but his true devotees recognize him, so never see God as an ordinary human. Now, that's something that's very difficult if one does not have Sant Samagam or if one has not listened to Kathavarta of Santo, of, tr of the true Sat Purush. But in that time, the Swaminarayan Sampradaya was growing. So it was very difficult, difficult for those who were new or maybe had a little bit of knowledge about the Sampradaya, the movement, that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is like this. If some ordinary person came and looked, then he would just see and think that this is a cook. But in reality, he was God himself. And only those who were from Akshardham and only those that Bhagavan Swaminarayan wanted to know understood that he was God himself. Now, Bhagwan himself came on this earth, lived for 49 years, and then ascended back to his Akshardham. But after that, he is not gone from this earth. He lives in his murti as well as his sant, his ekantik satpurush. Now his ekantik satpurush is divine as well. But if we look from the mere eyes, we can just see him eating, walking, talking, so on and so forth. Due to that, is very very difficult for us to recognize that he is not from this world because his actions his words his talk seem very very similar to 
the human comprehension we can say or the understanding of humans but his intention his kalyankari virtues his divine persona personality is something which is there yet still invisible meaning an open secret those who can see it and those who after seeing it join and attach oneself to the such and satpurush attain liberation but those who have doubts those who cannot comprehend those who cannot understand cannot attain bhagwan's akshardham because sadguru gunati tanan swami says in his vato which i have repeated many times but it's such an important vat that by this one vat one can attain bhagwan his divine abode swami says that i have not seen a person attain the abode of god without the association of a true sadhu he didn't say sadhu swami did not say just a saint a true sadhu meaning an ekantik sadhu a true a god realized sadhu there's many saints but those who have a connection with bhagwan those who talk with bhagwan those who have the exact characteristics in the shastras as a sadhu such kind of a sant swami is talking about and from that sant one by joining oneself one can attain akshardham so just like how god's form is divine his santo's form is also divine and by joining with such a sant one can attain akshardham in conclusion such kind of festivals bhagwan swami narayan celebrated but with that he started and now it's still continuing that was one factor another factor was he from these festivals he established many many principles that he wanted to reveal here on earth so his devotees and his sadhus can live to those principles so that they can please bhagwan swami narayan and attain his akshardham and nonetheless who doesn't like eating bhagwan swami narayan made eating into devotion something that no avatar has done in the past and bhagwan swami narayan did it himself he made the stew himself he served it himself even if we can say that a god who is not supreme just a god he would not do such a humble service bhagwan swami narayan is the supreme lord of lords and yet not only did he make but he also served his santos and bhaktos with compassion so we have received such a god we have received such an ekantik satpurush now our responsibility is just to further understand them join with them and attain akshardham saying this my humble jay swaminarayan